Hi guys, this is Tavius over here, and today, today it's time to sharpen or reload those weapons, Devil Hunters, because Monster Hunter World Iceborne is adding a new feature specifically for players who love to hunt in two-person teams. That's right, Iceborne is introducing a third new type of difficulty in the game, mainly Dual Hunter scaling. Now, the Monster Hunter series traditionally offered two difficulties that adjusted monster parameters for either one player or a group. The older series, for example, offered single-player difficulty for village or story mode, and multiplayer difficulty for hub or online play. Monster Hunter World tweaked that formula a bit by taking out the distinction between village and hub modes, and purely scaling for either solo play or multiplayer sessions, depending on the number of players. Multiplayer mode, however, traditionally scaled up for the maximum number of players, regardless if you had 2, 3, or 4 hunters. This all changes with the Iceborne expansion. In a developer stream held during E3 2019, Capcom's Ryuzo Tsujimoto and Konami Fujioka showed off several more new features for Iceborne, including a new two-player difficulty. By the way, it's not a Tsujimoto Fujioka hunt if you don't have Tsujimoto goofing around during the beginning of a hunt while the hard-working Fujioka asks him, what the heck are you doing in Japanese? Usually multiple times. So so wait, taking a dip in the hot spring, yeah, I think he's just gonna go have Making to try and join him. Kaname is actually already fighting Tigrex, but Ryozo is having a hot spring dip. So you there, know. there it is. View mode on the hot spring. <laughs> this is then usually followed by Tsujimoto arriving fashionably late with his hammer and eventually proceeding to get himself massacred, causing him to keep saying yabai yabai repeatedly and more often than not. Painting. <laughs> Alright, Rildo San, are you doing okay? You see the health drop in there. Oh, oh man. Careful. Very dangerous to, to do a flush ball attack. Right oh, the <laughs> oh no! He fainted! Oh, wait. So, wait, he didn't faint? No, no, what he got happened there? Up. This guy. <laughs> anyway, when taking part in a hunt with just two people, the game will now scale monster parameters for two players. It basically serves as a happy medium between the lowered monster stats of solo play and the buffed up parameters for multiplayer hunts with three or four players. As someone who played the bulk of Monster Hunter games in a two-man duo, this sounds intriguing as it means such hunts should now be theoretically easier. The question now, of course, is just how easy. In past games prior to World, I've always thought that online two-man hunts provided the perfect balance largely because they're not as hard as solo multiplayer, but also not as easy as a four-man hunt where monsters can quickly go down. By the way, another change to the game is that it will automatically scale its difficulty down again should people in your group leave after the hunt scales up to three or four player difficulty. This means it will scale down to two players if you're left with two, or one player if you're left by your lonesome in case people disconnect or simply leave. One thing to note is that your cats don't return in this case, but it's still better than being left alone with a tough monster, boasting multiplayer enemy HP like before. Another new addition is the Celiana Base minigame. Basically, the new Celiana Base has a Steamworks NPC station that allows you to play a QTE-type minigame where you earn a bunch of items by building up a meter on top of a large honking pot. <laughs> Examples of items you can earn include gourmet vouchers, armor spheres like hard armor spheres or king armor spheres, mega barrel bombs, mega potions, trank bombs, silver eggs, and dust of life. To play the game, you'll need to give the Steamwork staff fuel that you collect in the course of your hunts. This will then give you a chance to try your luck in literally moving a needle to the right, and you want to move it as far right as you can in order to get a chance for the better items. Another new feature is view mode, which allows you to greatly control the camera to either take screenshots of your character or simply admire the visual details of Monster Hunter World Iceborne. This includes poses with your character and cat in both the Celiana base or even when you are out and about during hunts. Sujimo noted that it does not stop time, so be careful when doing it during hunts as it leaves you vulnerable to monster attacks. If you are hit while using it, view mode will automatically be cancelled. Another thing that the developer showed off are the raider rides. Now, when Raider Rides were first shown during the Monster Hunter World Iceborne Story Mode trailer that was revealed recently, only Jagras Riding was shown. Capcom, however, has now confirmed that you can ride other monsters as well, as the livestream showed the devs riding one of the new monsters in Horfrost Reach. You can't manually control the monster when riding, as it will basically follow tracks and scout flies toward a monster. 
You can do prep work, however, while riding, such as sharpening, gathering items, or using consumables such as hot drinks and well-done steaks. Anyway, those are some of the latest features unveiled for the Iceborne expansion. So what do you guys think about the new changes? As always, feel free to share any thoughts or questions you may have in the comment section. Once again, this is Tabi Asobi, and thank you for watching.